Welcome to Holy Trinity Lagos. We're a church for all generations and a call to transform our homes, our communities, our nation, and our world through the power of the gospel. At HTL, we're a spirit-filled church where we experience the power of the word of God in the beauty of tradition. We worship with a blend of hymns and contemporary genres. We're a family of God's people founded in tradition, filled with power and flowing with innovation. Our doors are wide open to welcome you, whether you're asking questions for the first time or you're already walking in faith. Our mission is to help people have a personal relationship with God, find destiny, fulfill purpose, and experience a breakthrough in every area of life. We believe that the Word of God transforms lives and a transformed life will influence others leading to the transformation of our society and our world. Why not join us as we embark on a journey of a lifetime where together we discover purpose, make impact and change the world. Welcome home. Good morning, HTL family. Good morning, Holy Trinity Lagos and everyone joining us from all over the world. Thank you for joining us once again. We'd like to take this opportunity to thank you for spending this special time with yes. us Sunday after Sunday yes. online from your homes or wherever you are at the moment. We really do appreciate it. And we look forward to joining you every Sunday as well. God bless you for joining us. And if you're joining us for the first time this Sunday, please indicate in the box below with the hashtag first timers <laughs> and members of our Red Cafe team will give you an even extra special Holy Trinity Lagos welcome. God bless you once again, and we're glad you're here with us. Yeah, thank you so much for joining us again. And exciting to report that we are getting ever closer to returning to physical services. Yay! <laughs> Did a little dance. It's Fantastic. really quite exciting. We didn't think the journey would be this long. No, we didn't. Honestly, it hasn't been that smooth for us mm -mm. Um, because we had just moved location just before the lockdown, and we have just been dealing with one um, building, building, <laughs> building we challenge. We literally moved and then the <laughs> next the other, day was a lockdown. You right? know? So, well, happy to say that in the next two weeks, roundabout, you know, we'll be back in church. And let me say this, you know, the, the um, kind of um, apprehension about mm. going back to church, we're so encouraged because we've been hearing a lot this week about how meeting physically, honestly, everything about that communion yeah. in a room yeah. basically trumps everything else. Yes, the sense of community, the yes. atmosphere, but when you come together to worship God together, that, that's why the Bible says, yeah. oh, how good it is when brethren dwell together. You know, that there's, exactly. there's power in that as well. So much power in it. And you know, how many of you really enjoy worship on Zoom? <laughs> well, we like having you here. We're really glad. And the online services will continue, definitely. But we can't wait to be back yeah. together, worshipping and praising and having some form of human contact as much as it's safe and acceptable. <laughs> so we're looking yes. forward to it. Of course, we're, we're not going to stop with the online services. We're going to continue to make it interesting. And, you know, what we do here is pack it in with the word and hopefully make it as enjoyable for you as much as possible. Yes, and we thank God for his faithfulness so far. It hasn't been easy as possible. No, saying, it's but been... God has indeed been faithful. And I, I just thought when you were speaking just now about how the journey has been a bit rough, mm -hmm. but I just think most great journeys usually are. They always you know? start like that. Huh? They always start <laughs> like that. And then you get to the end and you're like, ah. So it feels like God has been building our spiritual muscle over the past few months. And you know, like we were saying earlier when we are talking, when God builds your muscle, it's because he wants you to lift something. Mm -hmm. So we're looking Means forward to what coming. God has in store. <laughs> yes, indeed. Fantastic. So it's a good time to pray. It's always a good time to pray. But before that, I want to share a word. And what I've been hearing is arise. And I've been thinking, arise, um, um, arise or come, Petra. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's it. That's, that's the national anthem. That's it. But I think, you know, it's more Isaiah 60. Mm. Arise and shine for the, the light. light you know, what is the glory of God? The glory of God is the manifestation of his presence. Now, we all know the kind of journey we've had this year mm. and everything we've been through. And it seems sometimes that we've just been there taking the punches. <laughs> yes. You know, taking the punches. Yes. But Not now, God is saying, get up, you know, arise. Because my presence 
is with you. Mm. And I have this picture of the medieval knights, you know, when they get on their <laughs> knees. <laughs> and they're knighted. And the queen says, arise, sir, sir Adibu, yes. <laughs> of, of, Pastor Boy is trying to tell us of, something. Of the <laughs> <laughs> they're okay. just joking. But really, I think it's just a strong message. Mm. That is where our mind should be, you know. God is saying, arise, mm. because the manifestation of my presence will go with you. Yes. And when God says arise, again, I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to be Debbie Downer, but it's also exciting. When God says arise, you arise for something. You arise yeah. to do something. You arise to enter into a purpose of his. Mm -hmm. So even in your analogy of being knighted, it's because those knights would get up and go into battle. So when Sorry. God says arise, for your light has come. You know, the, the verse that you quoted in Isaiah 60, if you read a bit further, it talks about darkness. So when God says arise as light, it is because there's darkness around and there's work that we need to do. So we're not supposed to look at the darkness or become part of the darkness. We're supposed to be the light mm -hmm. in the darkness, the source of people's encouragement. So exciting times ahead, I think. It's a good time to pray. Always a good time to pray. Let us pray. Father Lord, we thank you. We come before you this morning with thanksgiving in our hearts. We come into your presence with praise for your word says that we should give thanks in all things, O Lord. So again, we thank you. We thank you for calling us to arise, O Lord, even in this season, that regardless of what we see with our eyes, O Lord, that we look inwards and see your light, O God Almighty, and that in seeing your light, we manifest that light for others to see that your glory may be seen, Father God, Amen. throughout the earth, that the knowledge of you, mm -hmm. Father God, may go out into all the corners of the world. Father, we look forward with excitement to that which you have in store. We know and we acknowledge that the journey hasn't always been easy, but you have been with us and continue to be with us and continue to be our rock and our guide and our help. Father, we commit today's service into your hands, O oh Lord. We ask that you take absolute and total control, that you take preeminence, O oh God, that even as we arise, O oh Lord God Almighty, we arise in your strength, we arise in your power, we arise in your grace, and we arise in the knowledge and understanding that it is all about you. Father, we just thank you, and thank we ask you, that Lord. you take all of the glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So we have a wonderful practical word for you uh, from Pastor Shola. So please, just stay tuned for that. Mm. But before that, yes. let's join Trinity Symphony for some amazing time of worship. Yes. Oh, Father, this morning we just come with our sacrifice of praise. And we're lifting our voices this morning to say, have your way, oh God. We sacrifice our hearts to you, oh God. Because you are deserving of it all. Masi brahande kashota na yada handi brasida na taho si abahande. Le na tahandi rata branda bakho shahata yade.
Word in Church. Isn't it wonderful to know that God's Word encourages us to pray because when we pray, it changes things. And as we pray this morning, I'd like us to consider two thoughts from a passage of Scripture in Philippians 2, 13 to 16. I'll just read it and, and then we'll pray. From verse 12, it says, Dear friends, you have always followed my instructions when I was with you, and now that I'm away, it is even more important. Work hard to show the results of your salvation, obeying God with every reverence, with, with deep fear, with, with, with deep reverence and fear. For God is working in you, giving you the desire and the power to do what pleases Him. We look in our society today and we realize that things really need to change. But who is going to effect that change? Well, God can and God will through you and I. And that's what I want us to pray first this morning. Let's ask God to help us to recognize the desires He puts in us to do the right things. Let, let's pray that and then we'll take the second point. Let's pray now. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning and we thank you because you're working in us to desire to do what you want to do in our neighborhoods, in our cities, in our states, and in our nation, Nigeria. So Lord, help us, me, your church, your people, to recognize the desires that you put in us, O oh God, to do what is right, to help the next man, to uplift our neighbor, to encourage, and to be a blessing. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Now, the, the second part I'd like us to pray is the verse 16, and I'll read it. It says, holding firmly to the word of life, then on the day of Christ's return, I will be proud that I do not run the race in vain and that my work was not useless. We can have God's desires in us, knowing what is right to do, but it takes boldness to, to stand for what is right, to do what is right, especially when things around us seem to be going in, in a different direction. And if we think about it, what do we want Nigeria to be known for? A place where procedures, processes work, where people are kind, where there is safety, where there is peace. Well, it takes boldness to be able to give that to the people that God brings our way. And I want us to pray this morning for boldness to hold forth the word of life, even if our generation seems to be crooked and going in a negative way. By shining God's light, we can bring change to our world. Let's pray that. And so, Father, we also ask that you give us the boldness, the courage to hold on to your word and to hold forth your word, to do your word, to stand for your word, to act on your word, to respond in love, to be a blessing, doing the things that you have called us as your church, the light and the salt of the earth to do. We give you glory and honor for doing this in us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So as you go out into this week, take a bold step, stand for righteousness, and do what God puts in your heart to do so that people who encounter you will be remarkably blessed. Have a wonderful rest of the service. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning, everyone. How are you doing today? It's another beautiful Sunday morning in Lagos, Nigeria. I, for one, cannot believe that we're in November. And if I borrow my daughter's words, it's one month away from Christmas. Something to look forward to, something to rejoice for or rejoice in. 2020 has been one year. In fact, there are many words to describe 2020. I remember when I was younger and we used to talk about, I used to hear about Vision 2020 and all the things that were going to happen in 2020. All the things that have happened this year was you know, definitely not one of the things that we thought about. We started with COVID and then after that there was a lockdown and then there was the NSARS protest. No, there was first the SARS you know, pandemonium, then the NSARS protest, then the feedback from the government. And then after that, you know, we went into chaos and lootings. And then, you know, it's just been up and down. People have lost property. People have lost loved ones. It's been 
quite a chaotic year. It's been a different year, nothing like we imagined. And you know, the truth is that I do not think anyone is the same person or you, that started this year. I know that I'm not the same person that started this year. And we have a choice, you know. This year can either leave us better off or worse off. Now, better off not because anything, not because you were, you know, immune to the things that happened or not because any of those things didn't happen to you. Or worse off, not because also that all the things that could go wrong went wrong with you. It really depends on our approach, on the way that we choose to see what has gone on on our belief that indeed all things work together for good to them that love God, for them that love God and are called according to his purpose. The Bible doesn't say that some things, it doesn't say all good things, it doesn't say all bad things, it doesn't say some things, it says all things, good, bad, nice, ugly, whatever it is, that is our confidence, that all things work together for good to them that love God. And I just want to encourage someone this morning, just as I encourage myself, that this will make sense in the end it may not make sense now we may not understand what it has been about now but God does not waste process God does not waste pain God does not waste any event everything that has happened in 2020 will work together for our good it is a promise because God has said that and you know my charge you know before we go into the sermon is that it would be unwise, you know, to continue to live life as if 2020 did not happen. If anything that has happened, it has made us realize what is truly important. And as we get ready to go into 2021, one of the things that we must focus on is what is really important? How intentional is my life? You know, how, what has changed? What um, processes and adjustments do I have to make? If there's anything that we need to take out from 2020 is an assessment of what truly matters and how are we going to indeed arrange our lives according to God's pattern so that we focus on only what is important. It would be a tragedy for 2020 to finish and for us to go back to business as usual. That indeed will be a waste of our pain. I just want to encourage us this morning that indeed make, you know, just assess yourself and make the necessary adjustment and ask yourself, what is truly important? And what am I going to focus on as we go into 2021? Remember that the joy of the Lord is our strength. God's joy gives us strength and we are more than conquerors even through Christ Jesus. So like I said earlier, it's November. And I personally like to plan for the Gregorian New Year in the Gregorian year, which starts in January in November. The Jewish New Year has started already. It started in September. So in, in some ways, you know, a new year has started, you know, but the calendar we follow is the Gregorian New Year, which starts in January. And I like to prepare for that from November. So from November, I start seeing myself in another year. So really, I feel like 2021 has started, but it's not yet Christmas. So I won't let Christmas go before I jump into 2021, really. And so in November, I try to make adjustments. I try to make assessments. I try to look and say, what is in, in store for the new year. And as I prepared for this sermon, and believe me, I had another sermon. I had another sermon about building, about Nehemiah, about going forward and all of that. But I feel like the Lord puts, you know, he just gave um, like a tap on my shoulder and said, Madam, wait, 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 young lady, before you think of moving on, there's something I want you to do first. And the beautiful thing about God is that he's such a good, good father, always guiding our steps and leading us. And the, what the Lord said was, examine yourselves the title of this message is taking stock and we are going to be focusing on the key word that the lord has said examine yourselves now the good thing is that examine yourselves is in the bible and we're going to be taking it from the book of second corinthians 13 verse 5 and i'm going to read that to you so it says here examine yourselves as to whether you're in the faith test yourselves do you not know yourselves that jesus christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified. Examine yourselves, test yourselves. And as I was thinking about examining ourselves, you know, I was wondering in what area does God want us to examine ourselves? In what area are we called to actually, you know, assess ourselves? It's like, not what, self-assessment, self-examination. But you know one thing about exams, the person that determines who passed the exams is the person that sets the questions. So when we say examine yourselves, you are not going to examine yourselves by your own standards. The person that is telling us to examine ourselves is our Father, God in heaven. 
And so if you say examine yourself, that means that he has some criteria. He has what? The scheme of work. He has what? The marking guide. And so when we examine ourselves, what is God really saying to us? Now, God wants us to examine ourselves in two ways, in two categories. The first category is he wants us to examine ourselves on, um, in the area of our walk with Jesus, our personal relationship with Jesus. And the second thing is that he wants us to assess ourselves and examine ourselves in the area of the work and your personal assignment that he has called you to do. So I'm going to start with the first one, which is our personal work with Jesus. You know, one of the things I said when we started is that this year has been one year and it has taken a lot from everyone. Now, you know how you have to do a medical checkup. You know, after the age of 30, they say from the age of 30, 35, you need to do annual medical checks, right? We also have to make it a habit of constantly assessing ourselves. Now, after you have had a year like 2020, believe me, before you move forward, you want to first check your relationship with Jesus and say, you know what? Are we okay? You know, when you are dating someone and you know you guys have been dating for a while, all of a sudden you notice that you know the guy is just being funny or the girl is reacting a different way. You know, you want to have a conversation and say, are we okay? Are we doing okay? Even when you're married, you know, after a while you want to ask yourself, are we doing okay? How are we doing? Are we okay? It's the same thing with our relationship with Jesus, you know, which is also uh, all sorts of relationship, romantic, friendship, master servant, friends, co-workers, it's all, Jesus, our relationship with Jesus has all the combination in one. Father, daughter, it's all of that. Okay, Jesus is our brother. God is our father. But basically, our relationship with the Trinity covers everything. And so we want to ask ourselves, how are we doing in this relationship? And the Lord has a marking guide. And that marking guide is in Revelations chapter 2. So I'm going to start reading from verse 1, you know. So it says that, um, so remember what had happened in Revelations was that John was on the Isle of Patmos and Jesus had appeared unto him and had given him a message for the churches. So verse 1 says, To the angel of the church of Ephesus write, This thing says he who holds the seven stars in his right hand, who walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. I know your works, your labor, your patience, and that you cannot bear those who are evil. And that you have tested those who say that they are apostles and are not, and have found them liars. And you have persevered and have patience, and have labored for my name's sake, and have not become weary. Nevertheless, I have this against you, that you have left your first love. Remember, therefore, from where you have fallen, repent, and do the first works, or else I will come to you quickly and remove your lampstand from its place unless you repent. Now, this is very interesting. So God says here that, you know what? I see your works. You've done well. I see your labor 100%. I see your patience. You're doing so well. He says, you know what? You can't even bear those who are evil. You've tested the apostles, you know, and found out those that were fake. And that you've persevered and you've had patience. You've labored for my name's sake. He said, but I have, he said, you're not even weary. You're still strong. He said, but I have something against you. And that's the fact that you've forgotten your first love. Now, when I was listening to all this criteria that the Lord was saying, I was saying, surely there can be nothing wrong with these people. But God says, you've forgotten your first love. And, you know, I also had to assess myself. And I had to say, Lord, have I forgotten my first love? It seems like you're doing okay. It seems like I'm doing okay. It seems like I'm doing all of this. But is it possible that I might have forgotten my first love? And I had to do an assessment and ask myself, okay, God, what are the things I used to do when I first met you? Because here the Bible says that, he says here that, remember therefore where you have fallen, repent and do the first works. So God is calling us back to the beginning, you know. What are the things we used to do when we first met the Lord? What was our relationship with him like? What was your connection with him like? What was it that made you guys, you know, I keep on saying that the relationship we have with God is all shades of relationship, you know. What was it? How did your heart beat for the Lord? What were the things that were important to you? What were the things that were important to the Lord? What were the things that God held sacrosanct and you held sacrosanct as regards your relationship with God? God says, you have done well. He says, but this one I, I, I don't like. And that is the fact that you have not kept to your first love. And he's saying that if you don't do this, I'm going to come and remove your lampstand. Meaning that every other thing you've done is good, but this one is critical. And therefore, this is another way, this is one way that the Lord wants us to assess ourselves. Have you forsaken your first love? 
Yes, you still love the Lord. Yes, but is it like the way you loved him when you started? Yes, you are in church. Yes, you are preaching. Yes, you are obeying. Yes, you are persevering. Yes, you are keeping the gospel, keeping the word. But God says, that's your first love. He says, return back to the first works. Return back to that passion. Return back to that intimacy level. Return back to the things that you need to you used to do. And like me, I'd like to encourage you to sit down and say, Lord, what are the things I used to do? What are the things that I've stopped doing? What are the things that have happened that life in the process of just living in life, growing up, getting married, having kids, building businesses, going, you know, just building a career, building ministry. What are the things that I might have neglected in that walk with you? God is saying that assess yourselves. Have you fallen from your first love? Are there things that we used to do together? that you need to go back to do. You know, doing yesterday, I don't know what I was, I was assessing my time with God and just saying, Lord, what has my time, I think, was it yesterday? Yeah, assessing God, what has my time with you been like? What's the quality of my relationship and the time I spend with you? And I got a picture, you know, the picture was like, almost like I saw like a picture of Jesus and he was sitting and he was like waiting for me. So every time I say, Lord, I'm going to spend time with you every, this particular day and this particular time, Jesus is there waiting. And I saw him, it was such a, a beautiful picture. How will I put it? It was like in white, you know, and he was like sitting waiting for me because I'd said I'll be there at that time. For me, I realized that, Shola, you need to be, you need to take your time with God seriously. Don't be doing different times and fixing different things that do not align with that time. You know, stay consistent in your time with God because it's priceless. That's one way I'm returning to my first love, you know. What do you, what is it that the Lord is nudging in your heart? The second thing, and we're going to take it from the same Revelations chapter 2, but it's verse 14. This thing says, He who has the two sharp edged sword. Let me see. Yes. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is, and you hold fast to my name and did not deny my faith, even in the days in which Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was killed amongst you, where Satan dwells. It says, but I have a few things against you because you have, you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam who taught Balak to put a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Thus you have also those who hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. Repent or else I will come to you quickly and will fight against you and will fight against them with the sword of my mouth. So here he's saying you have some people here who teach people to sin. They put a stumbling block and indeed ask people to eat things sacrificed to idols and also encourages sexual immorality. So this is twofold. Now eating things sacrificed to idols means that you're opening a door for sin to come in and also the sin of sexual immorality. Now listen to their own sin. He said because you have, the, you have there those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. He did not say that everybody was holding the doctrine of Balaam. He says, you have entertained in your midst those who hold the doctrine of Balaam. You've entertained in your midst those who have opened the door to sin and opened the door to spiritual, to sexual immorality. Now, the script, what I want to ask and what the Lord is asking us today is, are you accommodating of sin going on around you? Now, you are not necessarily the one committing the sin. But are you so used to chaos that even sin goes on around you and you are not moved? In your midst, in your home, in your office, in your house, in your business, wherever you are, are you accommodating of Balaam and, and the things of Balak and the things of the Nicolaitans and sexual immorality and sin? Are you accommodating of that? And that's another way that the Lord wants to assess us. You know, because we live in a world that has been so, how will I put it to you, so... The, the lines are so blurry and therefore sometimes you are wondering oh gosh when are we when are we when are we drawing the line one of the things that really makes me laugh or not laugh or really but I, I keep on wondering and someone needs to help me understand this is if I come to your party and you say to me that you are a Christian I want to know that you are a Christian in your party now what does that mean it means that I don't want to come into your party and be hearing the secular music that I don't allow my children listen to at home. I don't want to come to a party that is by Christians and be listening to words or secular music or things or not, be, not any secular music, but things that are not edifying or, who, or wholesome because that's what the general populace likes or that's what the general populace wants. So what are you doing? You are accommodating of sin. 
Are you accommodating of sin that you see wrong going on around you and you just move on and you're like, it's not my business? You know, I'm one of those people that when we enter a salon and then you're playing um, uh, a music video or playing something that is just not right, I'm going to ask you to change it, especially if I have children. But I even had to say, Shola, you know, when last did you do that? Are you getting, you know, are you coming to a place where you're getting, you're becoming accommodating of it? Are you getting weary and tired of saying, no, this is not right. It shouldn't happen around me. No, this is not right. At least as long as it's in my space, because that's what God was saying here. He was, was making them give an account of their space. He wasn't talking about necessarily what was going on in the whole world. He said, in this your space, you have allowed these people to function. You have allowed these people to operate. And he's saying, no, that thing I have against you. And it's the same thing to assess yourselves. Are you accommodating of sin around you? Are you accommodating of sin in your space? Are you, are you, have you stopped being a standard of righteousness? So that's number two assessment. Number three. Let's take it from um, verse 18. And to the angel of the church in Tyre, Tyra, they have some very interesting names. This thing says the son of God who has eyes like a flame of fire and his feet like fine brass. I know your works, love, service, faith, and your patience. And as for your works, the last are more than the first. Nevertheless, I have a few things against you because you allow that woman, Jezebel, who calls herself a prophetess, to teach and seduce my servants to commit sexual immorality and eat things sacrificed to idols. And I gave her time to repent of her sexual immorality and she did not repent. So here, then it goes on to say that the Lord will cast her to a sick bed and all of that. So this is the second time that the Lord is talking about sexual immorality. And you know what? If the Lord hammers on something, it means that it's prevalent in our midst. The Lord is saying that, is there sexual immorality in our midst? Is there sexual immorality in your life? I know that the standard of sexual immorality is no longer just the fact that you're sleeping around. You know, it goes from, what are you thinking in your heart? It goes from, what did you, what are you looking at? What are you feeding on? And if the Lord is hammering on this, then it means that it's something that we need to look into. Is pornography becoming a thing that is acceptable in our midst? Is sexual immorality in terms of cheating, in terms of fornication, in terms of masturbation, pornography, all of those things, are they things that are becoming a part of our lifestyle? I, what are you watching? You know, I keep on telling people that I only watch PG-13. And when I tell people, they're always laughing at me, but I'm serious. So a few days ago, I said, you know what, let me, let me, I saw a movie, it looked really nice. So I wanted to watch it. It was PG-16. I checked, you know, what it was, the information. It seemed good. And the next thing, I had not even watched the movie, movie up to five minutes. I was a swear word. I was like, what is this? I'm still trying to say, okay, this was one. And then another thing, they showed me another scene. I ran off. In fact, you see the speed with which I changed this, the, the, the channel. Because it's not about, it's what I see. What am I letting into my eyes? What am I watching? What am I looking at? What am I reading? What am I feeding my eyes on? Because that's how it starts, you know? It may you start watching things that are not right, saying things that are not right. Then you start thinking about it. You know, the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. So it may you start thinking about it, that becomes you, you know? And then after that, it's just a while before you carry out the action. Some people never carry out all their actions, but they've been doing it in their hearts for so long. Some of us, the Lord is saying, that's sexual immorality. I want you out of it. I want you to get out of it. I want you to uncover what is in the secret. Open it up because I want to save you. Assess yourselves. Are we in, have you returned to your first love? Are you doing the things you used to do when you met the Lord? Assess yourselves. Are you accommodating of sin? Assess yourselves. Are we engaging in sexual immorality or allowing it fester in our midst? Okay, number four, number four assessment is taken from General, Revelations chapter three. Um, and to the angel of the church in Sardis writes, this thing says he who has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know your works, that you have a name, that you are alive, but you are dead. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die, for I have not found your works perfect before God. Remember therefore how you have received and heard, hold fast and repent. Therefore, if you will not watch, I will come upon you as a thief, and you will not know what hour I will come upon you. So he says, people think you are alive, but you're actually dead. You know, you have the form of godliness, but you lose, you don't have the power thereof. It says, therefore, you know, and I think what I wrote here was, are you dead or are you weak? Do you have the form of Christianese, but we can't find you, your spirit is gone. 
Are you saying the right word, saying the, um, praying in quotes the right prayers, quoting the right scriptures? Just you have an appearance of Christianity, but you are not there. And the Bible is saying here then that you know what? You want to be watchful and strengthen yourself. The Bible says that indeed that the Spirit of God will strengthen us by His Spirit in our inner man. So assess yourself. Only you knows yourself. Nobody else knows you. Are you dead or are you weak? And then the fifth one now says here in Revelation 3 verse 14 to 18. It says, And to the angel of the church in, in, to, of the Laodiceans write, This thing says the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I, I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I would vomit you out of my mouth. Are you lukewarm? Are you on the fence? Do you know whether you are hot? Are you cold? Are you for God or you're not for God? Are you, are you, where are you? Where, where, where are you? You know, and that's another important one. Where are you? Do you have a, do you have a stand? Do you know where you are? Do you know what you need to be doing? Do you, are you hot or cold? And so that is assessing our relationship with God. Finally, assessing the work that God has called you to do. And there's a few things I want to say that. The Bible says in John 4, verse 34 to 35, and the disciples were speaking to Jesus. And Jesus says, my meat is to do the will of him who sent me. Jesus said, I'm not called to everybody. Jesus was not called to go to the ends of the earth. He was called to the lost ones of the tribe of Israel. That is who Jesus was called to. The question is, who are you called to? Do you know your own personal assignment? Do you know why you are here? Is it, are you trying to do someone else's work? Are you trying to do work and, you know, to say, oh, me too, I'm working. God is saying, assess yourselves in the area of your personal work with God, but also the personal assignment that God has asked you to do. So the first thing you want to do in that area is ask God, why am I here? What am I doing here? In the book of 1 Corinthians 3, verse 10 to 15, to summarize that scripture, it says that, you know what? The quality then was Paul and Apollos, and they were saying, oh, this, 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 and this, this, that. God, Paul says, I don't have time to argue with you. But what is going to happen is that the quality of everyone's work is going to be assessed. And it's going to be thrown, it's going to pass through fire. And it says that quality of your work will be tested. And that if your work has the quality and the foundation in God and has been done to God's standards, it will stand. But if it hasn't, he said, you yourself will be saved, but it will be like one that just escaped fire. So even when you know what it is that God has called you to do, the question I want to ask is, how are you doing that work? Do you know that we're going to be passed and we're going to take an exam and it's not like we're just going to say we're doing this. You know, everywhere in social media, everybody's doing something. Everybody's doing something, which is very good. The question I want to ask is, are you doing what God has asked you to do? Number two, how are you doing the work that God has asked you to do? Because in the end, God is not going to judge Shola by what everybody else did. He's only going to judge Shola by what Shola, he asked Shola to do and whether Shola did it to the, to, the, to the joy of the Lord. Remember that the only person that determines whether we've done well is God because he has the, he has the script, he has the marking guide, he has the scheme of work and only him can know whether we did it or not. Therefore, I'd like to just encourage us as we go into November and we're already in November, but as we approach the end of this year, remember that indeed God wants us to examine ourselves because there's so much more in store for us in 2021. He wants us to be ready indeed for 2021. And the promise is that better is the end of a thing than the beginning. And he wants to be sure that we're in the right frame of mind. We're strong enough. We've equipped ourselves and we've empowered ourselves. Yes, it's time to build, but you cannot build if you are not okay, if you've not assessed yourself, and if you're not equipped and empowered for the next phase of the journey. So just trusting that the Lord indeed will bless you and perfect all that concerns you in Jesus' name. So Father, we just want to thank you for your word. We want to thank you because you are such a good, good father and that you have loved us with an everlasting love. We thank you because it is he that you love, that you correct, oh God, and you, you actually want to be better. Thank you for this word of correction that you have brought unto us, that indeed we should examine ourselves. Father, we submit ourselves unto you today, and we ask that you help us, oh God, to do this examination with you. Holy Spirit, sit beside us and show us the areas that we need to work on. Father, we cannot do any of these things without you, so we ask you for help. 
We ask indeed that you will help us, that you will strengthen us and you will empower us. We ask that you will give us grace for the journey ahead. Thank you for the promise that you have given us, O God, that we are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ. We bless you, O God, indeed, because indeed all your promises concerning us are yes and amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. It has been an awesome time in the presence of the Lord today. Wouldn't you say that? Well, we want to say thank you for being a part of our fellowship today. Now, it's time for us to present you with an opportunity to give, to give your tithes, to give your offerings, your thanksgiving offerings. We all know that giving is a form of worship to our God. We can't really repay God for all the awesome things he's done for us, but we can show appreciation with a little token from what we have. Please give using the details that are displayed on the screen, or you can visit our website, www theholytrinitylagos.org to give as well. Let's pray. In Jesus' name, Lord, we want to say thank you for the opportunity to be here to fellowship today, for the gift of life, and for the opportunity to even have to give. We say thank you, Lord, and we ask that you bless what we've given today and accept it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs> for the week. Matthew's Club. A Matthew's Club is a Bible fellowship cell. We have centers in Victoria Island, in Lekki and in Ikoyi and we meet online on Tuesdays at 7 p.m. But we have big news for you. We're opening two new centers. One is the mainland Matthew's Club and the other is the Ikoyi 2 Matthew's Club. They will be launched on the 10th of November. Now, our Matthew's Club is not just about coming together to do deeper Bible worship. We also go beyond the spiritual. So please make it a point to join us. We have leaders who would help you determine which cell to join. Kids Connect and TUG. Our children are not left out because they're precious to us, aren't they? So for our kids, who are between the ages of nine and below, we meet every Sunday on YouTube with a pre-recorded service for them at 10 a.m. For our kids who are between nine and 12, we meet on Zoom every Sunday at 9.30 a.m. Underground Church, our older kids, they're not left out as well. We have exciting Instagram live session for them at 9.30 a.m. And the handle is at TUG Movement. Please ensure your kids join in. Hope and Anchor. Our Hope and Anchor is a corporate prayer meeting. It holds at 6 p.m. on Thursdays. Join us as we pray and lay out all our burdens at the foot of the cross. It's online and the information is being displayed on the screen right now. Finally, please remember that we're still providing you with great content and resources to encourage you on your journey during these unique times. We all need encouragement, don't we? So we can get all our messages on our YouTube channel and our website. And don't forget, there might just be one friend or family member that needs encouragement. Please share. So these are announcements for the week. Don't forget our Kids Connect, our Matthews Club, and our social media platforms for you to just hook up with us during the week to get encouraged. Welcome back. Welcome back. Ouch. <laughs> yeah. I, so feel, I feel personally attacked. It feels like you were shouting at us. 
apart. It was really, really good. And the reason we feel this way is it's so accurate. This word is so accurate. You know, when someone is speaking to you and yep. to your heart, you're kind of like, ah, <laughs> calm down, no, you know, don't yeah. come at us like that. But that's the best way we like it. But it is so necessary. Yeah, the word. It's so necessary. Especially as the year comes to an end, it's necessary to take stock. Mm. And to take stock of the things that are actually important. A year like 2020 has really taught us to sort of reprioritize our lives, you know, it's taught us what's really important, you know. I'm going to put you on the spot. What was your first love? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to say you? Jesus, my first love. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jesus, yes. No, but that's fine. And, 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 and you know, there, I, I think there's some things that, you know, we just did with ease. Mm. Maybe when we started this journey with mm. God. Yeah. And we've forgotten about them. Yeah. And, and, you know, the letters to the churches, I mean, those letters, I just think that way. Ah. But the thing is, he says so much more that is good about yeah. the churches, yeah. but then he just picks one or two things. So it's Actually, those one or two important. things that we kind of need to, yeah. Very important. <laughs> and it's funny you should say that. We have a friend, a friend of ours is a new convert, and I was having a conversation with her about how right now she'll ask God for this and yeah. get it and ask God for that and get it. And I was like, <laughs> enjoy it because... I feel like the reason it's like yeah. that at the beginning of your relationship with God is you're coming with such openness and sincerity That's and just, just trust and mm. faith. And then over time in the journey, in the Christian walk, sometimes we get a bit jaded. So I feel like when Jesus says, remember your first love, it's like go back to how yes. it was, you yes. know, like when we first fell in love. Like, <laughs> ch like childlike, you know, yeah. you're looking with expectation. You know, after a while, you, it starts to get a little bit um, it's like you get, you yeah, get repetitive. It. Yeah, you take it for granted a bit. I think yeah. I think that's what happens with a lot of relationships. And sometimes the Bible might sound a bit harsh, but it's actually quite simple. No, it's you very know, it's simple. like remember what it was like at the beginning. Hmm. Go back to that. Hmm. And taking stock, that for me is part of it. Like you know that yeah. that trust, that yeah. childlike love and and belief that. We all exactly. had when we first started this journey. And I think um, what's even clear from the message was, even if it's not about your overall journey, mm. even if you look at it in the context of this year, you know, Seasons. this season, mm. you know, this year that we've had, how have you endured through? Mm. Have you allowed yourself to change? Yeah. Can't you go back to before 2020? Yeah. <laughs> and stay in that place. It's almost like, how, what condition have you come yes. out in? Like, examine yourself. Which, sure. It's also a good thing as the year comes to an end. What, what condition are you going into 2021 in? Like, what Titi is going into yeah. 2021? Which Adeboe is going into 2021? And what came to me when I was listening to this sermon was the idea of an audit. Mm. You know, it's like when you examine yourself, when you examine your books, you audit your That's books. That's the accountant. Uh, yes, I, I, in my past life, I was an accountant. <laughs> so you look at your books and, you know, a lot of people feel trepidation when they say the auditors are coming because they're like, oh, what have we done right? What have we done wrong? So imagine being the auditor, doing a self-audit and looking at your credits, looking at your debits. Sorry, I'm getting a bit um, technical. But just... You know, understanding, understanding where, you are. where you are. Also, the reason, another reason for an audit, so you can make amends. You know, like the auditors don't come in just because your business is about to crash. They come in to just tell you what's going right, yeah. what's going wrong. Yeah. So, having an audit, a personal audit, a spiritual audit at a time like this is actually self quite important. Mm. A self check, mm. yes, like an MOT for your vehicle. You mm -hmm. don't wait until your engine knocks mm -hmm. to do the MOT. You then just see the things that need to be tuned and retuned, you know? Yeah, powerful message. For me, I, I, I found myself thinking, ah, what, what were those things I used to really enjoy, you know? Mm. And I used to really enjoy, you know, I used to enjoy just researching certain things about different texts and going through the background. <laughs> like, ah, I don't have, I don't do that so much anymore. And uh, I'm going to go back to that. Mm. Because there was something in that space where it was just, me and God. And we were on a little journey together, you know? So, yeah. So that that was a great message. Fantastic and message. I wanted to say something about Pastor Shola. She doesn't like being called <laughs> she Pastor. Doesn't. But you know, I, I didn't think... call you. <laughs> 
What a great word, you know. Uh, we, need to, we need to declutter the word now and just keep it simple. That's, and I really enjoyed that. Thank you so much. May God bless you and just continue to strengthen your ministry, your prophetic ministry as well. Yes, yes. <laughs> definitely another sermon I'm going to watch over and over yeah. again. And I'm going to remind myself personally to take stock. So like I said, I can fine tune things before they go completely of kilter, of so kilter. to speak. God help us all. Amen, amen, <laughs> amen, amen, amen. service yeah. today. So, can't believe the time has flown by as it usually does. <laughs> um, <laughs> thank you for joining us. But before we go away, we just want to just reach out again. You know, we've had a series of protests in Lagos. There was quite a little bit of looting, quite a lot of looting. So if there's anybody out there, church members or families of church members, we, are, we just want to reiterate again, you can reach out to us, yes. whether it's for prayer, for counseling, or even to do anything that we can do to help yes, yes. At, this, at, at this time. You know, we are really here to help. So please feel free to reach out to us. And we're here to help you rebuild as well, whether it's spiritually, whether it's physically, yeah. you know, that there, there people in the church family, in the church community that can even offer yeah. services, that can offer help, whether it's with Exactly. Construction, building work, you never know. We've got Ac accounting. Accounting, interior <laughs> design, project management. I mean, there's a wealth of knowledge, a wealth yeah. of skill, a wealth of resources, and we're here. We're waiting. So please reach out to us in whichever way suits you either phone, email, WhatsApp, text message, if yeah. that makes you more comfortable. But we're waiting to hear from you. And if it's just a word of prayer, if that's mm -hmm. what you need right now, we're here for that as well. Please reach out. So again, thank you for joining us. Please stay connected with us. On that note, God bless you. Have a wonderful week. May the Lord's countenance shine upon you this week like never before. And may God fill you with his peace and his grace. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful week.